Welcome to SVG TV News for Monday, August 28, 2017. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. This country's Minister of Health, Senator Luke Brown, has published a 38-page document aimed at sensitizing persons on the development and delivery of health care services at the country's main health facility, the Milton Cater Memorial Hospital. The document, which was sent out to various media houses earlier today, include information on a number of areas of interest and concerns as it relates to physical and human resources at the hospital, as well as other initiatives which are in the works or are to come on stream to enable the enhancement of healthcare delivery at the hospital. Nikita Tony tells us more in this report. Nikita Memorial Hospital is a song general referral hospital which compares favorably to other similar hospitals in the Caribbean and other developing countries. That's the message coming out of a document published by this country's health minister, Luke Brown, which looked at the delivery of healthcare services at the Milton Tatum Memorial Hospital, or MCMH, under the Unity Labour Party administration from 2001 to 2017. Pointing out that the mission of the MCMH is part and parcel of the government's goal to provide an acceptable level of health care for all, the 38-page document was divided into 13 subsectors to highlight various areas of development such as spending, salaries of healthcare workers, physical conditions, medicine and medical supplies, operational issues and how a number of gaps at the institution are being dealt with. The report, according to the minister, became necessary and desirable, seeing that over the past few weeks there has been considerable public discussion on the delivery of healthcare services at the MCMH. Spending, staffing and salaries since 2001 are said to be comparatively good with several vital operational issues including hospital management requiring further action. As it regards to the physical condition and the range or quality of equipment at the MCMH, the report stated that these areas have improved significantly, noting that there is still more to be done in both regards. Outlining that many services at the MCMH have been marked by excellence, including critical pediatric care, there was also mention of the improvement of medical and surgical services in a wide range of specialities since 2001. Support services at the main health facility are said to be sound, but there is noted room for improvement. And according to the report, satisfactory arrangements are being facilitated to fill the gaps in tertiary or critical health care delivery at the institution. Admitting that there has to be more creative initiatives to aid in the financing of the health facility, it was highlighted that there is an uplifting mission, vision and a bundle of core values to sustain and develop the MCMH further. The minister went on to state that the strategic areas of focus for the way forward for the MCMH would lie in management, administration, clinical services, personal management and human resources development, hospital infrastructure and equipment, noting that much progress has been made on all fronts, but there is a lot which remains to be done. Noting that he was placing the thoughts in the public domain for consideration, Minister Brown further urged persons to not merely beat up on the health system, but rather have serious, informed and constructive discussion about change and improvement in health that is devoid of political grandstanding. Nikita Tony reporting for SVG TV News. Police are currently investigating the death of a toddler in the South Rivers area who is believed to have died on Thursday the 24th August as a result of a neck injury. Volunteer Director of Marion House Jeannie Oliver, who is also a social worker and activist, believes that much of the abuse that is perpetrated on children is caused by frustration due to unemployment. She says that while there is no excuse for abusing children, many parents and caregivers in this country may be depressed because they are unable to meet their basic needs. Some of us may make some sugar cakes and tarts and ginger sticks and whatever and sell, but that cannot sustain us on a regular basis. Sometimes, um, because we are unemployed, we go into a very depressed state of mind. So our depression allows us to do a number of things, even though we are doing it. We are not totally conscious of the impact that it is having on our children, our partner, our workplaces, the juniors at our workplaces. Not only the unemployment and the depression, but we have to remember, Sharon, that in today's 
Vincentian society. We do not have a number of family structures in place as in my day. My mother was there for me. My parents were there for me. But today, grandparents are few and are far between. Oliver says that there is a need to speak up against child abuse and that the matter should be reported to the police immediately. We have the government agencies, there's the family services, right? 4562949. You call and you register a complaint. Mm -hmm. If the child is being abused, the first place you take the child is to the hospital or to the clinic. They have a responsibility from the level of the clinic or the level of the hospital to report it to the police. They don't have a choice. No choice. It is violence being perpetrated against the child. And the new domestic violence legislation speaks to that. The Child Protection Act also speaks to that. So, government employees have a responsibility. If you work with the government and even a child is being abused, who lives next door to you, you have a responsibility to report it. And if you don't report it, we can deal with you. Hot 97.1 radio announcer Colin the Hitman Graham has been suspended from his job on one month's leave without pay. The popular radio personality brought the news on his Facebook page stating that, quote, after reporting to work today, I have been told I am now suspended without pay effective immediately, unquote. When SVG TV News contacted Graham, he declined to comment further on the matter. A number of posts of support as well as criticisms has been dished out to the radio personality who last week was elected as the opposition's new Democratic Party candidate for East St. George. His candidacy has sparked discussions in many quarters since his girlfriend, through a social media post, accused Graham of abusing her and noted that she had police and medical reports to substantiate her claims. Graham later on radio responded to the accusation and said that he and his girlfriend had made apologies to each other and also applauded her for speaking up on the issue. He called for a conversation on domestic violence and also pleaded with the public to not vilify her. When SVG TV News contacted manager of Hot 97.1, Luke Boe, on Graham's suspension, he stated that it is an internal matter and will not comment further on it. The government should be able to be compensated for damage caused to public property. That's according to the Minister of Transport and Works, Julian Francis, as he spoke at a media conference here earlier today on work being undertaken by the Buildings, Roads and General Services Authority, BRAXA, across the country. Highlighting the issue of damaged guardrails, Minister Francis was adamant that most of the damage was caused by irresponsible drivers who in the end have their vehicles paid for by insurance companies whilst the government receives nothing for its damaged property. Francis added that this is a matter which must be rectified. This is a real disaster. I have asked public servants, the police, the chief engineer's office, that we have a responsibility to get compensated for damage to public property. Too often, a vehicle, irresponsible driving most of the time, fly down cars and they lick out 20 rails. They go over below, their, their vehicle get paid by insurance, but the government rails don't get paid. I'm asking for new vigilance in this area. We just did Mount Young Bridge. And within four weeks of opening Mount Young Bridge, a rental car, rented by somebody who was here for the weekend, broke the rail. I had to do the investigation to find out who, who's the vehicle. And I intend for the owner or the vehicle insurer to pay for that. Speaking on repairs of such rails, Francis encouraged the public to exercise patience and highlight some of the difficulties in replacing rails, particularly in the Casson Hill area. But it is easy to work in those areas. It's like repairing South Leeward Highway. Use a road and fix it while you're using it is always a challenge. People are using that sidewalk 
if you have to do the work on the sidewalk, you have to allow them to pass in that they have to walk in the road and the traffic is heavy. Also, the design is that you have to tie, if you see now, we are cutting the sidewalk, putting steel back, driving steel, so you get a tie across, right? Now, they came out of the slab with no lateral steel to hold the, the force of the rails, so we are designing them differently. Those of you who looked at it and saw the existing rail that comes back to the step to go down into Roseau, into Wolverhoe. I don't know how that design made it initially. You're walking on the sidewalk, then you have to walk out in the road and come back on the sidewalk because you step right in your way and they put the rail out in the sidewalk. So I've asked them to cut that out, fill in the area and redesign the step going down to Wolverhoe. Responding to a question in relation to damage of roads by heavy equipment, Minister Francis advised owners and operators of such equipment of the use of low loaders as well as safety precaution to reduce the damage to public roads. Today we have low loaders that can move these equipment around, but there are some irresponsible equipment owners. And I ask you, life, if you know anybody who is doing that, let me know. And I will take the appropriate action. Because if you have heavy equipment, heavy equipment should not be stored in a residential area like where you live. You know what I mean? You should, you should lease land somewhere and, and, and park the stuff there where a low loader could operate. Now, there, there are some areas, even where we have to do works, that you have to put an excavator on the road, you have to put a tractor on the road, but there are precautions you can take. Tires are most effective. Five-eighths construction ply works just as well. When you finish, the construction ply is no good, but at least you save government road. And at today's media conference, the Minister of Transport and Works revealed that the office of Braxa was broken into over the weekend and the perpetrator or perpetrators made off with almost 800 EC dollars. I was not surprised, well, I think an overstatement, but last week I believe you got report that Braxa offices at, at, Cali at um, Cane Hall was broken into and I have absolutely no doubt that the persons who did that heard so much money being bantered about that they figured Braxa have all this money in the safe at Cane Hall. So they went out there to look for the money. But I understand all they got was $798. There needs to be more private sector interest and investment in the arrowroot industry. This suggestion was made by concerned farmer Aina Nantern as she spoke with SVG TV News highlighting issues which continue to hamper production and productivity within the industry. Nanton stated that finance is one of the issues which farmers face as the entity which is responsible for paying farmers is usually late in making payments which affect their ability to purchase much needed fertilizer and other supplies. I heard that they already like, ship already starts overseas. But I don't know if they had a bank or whatsoever. Why? Because I said, you know, once you're reaping a crop every year, you should have money inside to start the crop the other year. But not, not, it not happens so. Like every year we just facing that problem. Well, it affects me because, you know, you have me bill to pay and like, get it for so, like, Well, I, I get money different, you know, different. Like, I, I don't really depend on that alone. I do a lot of farming, so I always keep my fertilizer. So I really give, it, give my own fertilizer and so on. But, you know, it's, it's that because when you, get, you depend on that and you can't get it, you know, it's, it's really a stressful in because a lot of people depend on what they work for and so on. Nanton added that mechanical issues at the Lone Arrowwood Processing Factory in Owea is also an issue of concern and expressed the need for private sector investments in the Arrowwood industry. Because they, they, they had a the late start because they was working and the yeah, you know, everything they do, they just do it late. Because the crop supposed to start in January because of the, there was doing another drain out, doing another drain out, all of that to keep back the, uh, um, the crop from start until, I think it was late down in February, ending of February, sometime they it start. Because that is the only factory in St. Vincent. I think they should really look, look at it properly before they, you know, the starting of the crop. 
make sure everything is, I mean, you don't know when, when you're going to break down and so on, but try to get, you know, parts and so on for it. But I think if government having a problem, if they're having the problem and a private um, company want to take it over, I think well, it probably might be good. And former opposition leader Annie Eustace is convinced that a question sent to the clerk of the House of Assembly by opposition MP for North Leeward Patel Matthews has prompted the government to take certain actions. The question to be asked in Parliament tomorrow, Tuesday, August 29th, relates to the current situation surrounding the railroad industry. Eustace on radio today suggests that this question may have pushed the government to make payments to farmers who have been owed for months for their rhizomes. Recent situation whereby hundreds of pounds of our roots rhizomes have been left to rot on the factory compound in a way is cause for serious concern. In light of this, will the minister please state A eh, how many pounds of our roots rhizomes are presently at the OER factory yard? What is the monetary value? of the rhizomes presently at the factory yard, whether or not farmers will be paid for the rhizomes, give an update of the management structure that is in place for the arrow industry with reference to personnel and their roles. This question is almost fully answered because during this week, they paid. the government Parents and God, the stuff cleared does improve in the environment because they weren't smelling too good and they have in fact paid. Paid about a million and sixty thousand dollars mm -hmm. on Friday. This question by Patel triggered that, that decision by the government. So after coming parliament tomorrow to say anything less would have been problematic for them. Making reference to what is currently taking place in neighboring Barbados, where a prediction has been made that the country's national insurance services will soon suffer from cash flow problems. The opposition MP went on to send a clear warning of what can happen in SVG if nothing is done about issues such as the ongoing trend of borrowing from the NIS. And some of the areas that they are talking about, we can expect if we don't put our shoes or foot in the right place, that we're going to experience, and we have already started to experience some of those problems. Remember we just had an increase in the contribution rate? We're extending the retirement rate. We have done those things mm -hmm. already, and they are increasing further. They haven't got to the level that Barbados is yet, but we have a warning True. Because we are doing the same things, including the government and the we're doing the same things. We know the borrowing here is pretty heavy too. And they mentioned that all, not all the contributions deducted are going to the NIS. We had the same situation here, mm -hmm. where the government kept back $23 million in contributions from the NIS. An investigation is being conducted here into the death of 65-year-old tradesman Carlos Bibi of Decent Cottage, Old Montrose. Bibi's body was discovered on Saturday morning on the rocks at Casa Bay in the Edinburgh area. According to his brother Basil Williams, on Friday morning, Bibi went fishing, which was one of his hobbies, and did not return home. A search was conducted on Friday evening into the night. However, there was no sign of him. The search party again went out on Saturday morning and discovered Bibi's body on the rocks in Castle Bay. A post-mortem examination is expected to be conducted on his body to ascertain the exact cause of death. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment and the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, will conduct an Incident Command System, ICS, training workshop here over the next three days, starting tomorrow, August 29th. The Incident Command System workshop is funded by PAHO through the Global Health Canada. 
The workshop mainly targets senior persons who are involved in emergency response, emergency operations center management, EOC, at the national level, and persons who manage their own EOC. The main objectives of the workshop are to introduce participants to the concepts and principles of ICS as an effective system for managing emergencies, to help participants to identify where their agency fits into the ICS structure and to have a better understanding of how the ICS structure expands or contracts to meet the needs of an incident, among other areas. The Incident Command System workshop will take place at Nemo's Conference Room, Old Montrose, commencing at 8.30 a.m. each day. Mm -hmm.